First thing in the morning. Dan's alarm clock rings, and he wakes up. He gets out of bed. He goes into the bathroom. After using the toilet and flushing it, he washes his hands. He brushes his teeth, shaves, and takes a shower. He dries himself off with a towel. Then he brushes his hair. He gets dressed. He makes breakfast, and eats it. Then he leaves the apartment. Brushing your teeth, flossing. Jenny runs some water over her toothbrush. She squeezes toothpaste onto her toothbrush. She moves her toothbrush up and down, and back and forth. To rinse her mouth, she takes some water, swishes it back and forth in her mouth, and spits it into the sink. She rinses off her toothbrush. Then she puts it back in the toothbrush rack. She flosses her teeth by pulling out a long piece of floss, slipping it between her teeth, and moving it back and forth and up and down. Taking a shower. Dan pulls the shower curtain shut. By turning the knob, he turns the water on. He washes his hair with shampoo, and the rest of his body with soap. Then he rinses off with water. After turning the water off, he steps out of the shower. He takes a towel from the towel rack. Then he dries himself off. He wraps a towel around himself, and he dries his hair. He puts some deodorant under his arms. Getting dressed, a man. Tom puts on some underwear, a T-shirt, some socks, some pants, and a shirt. Putting on a pair of pants. Tom steps into his pants. Then he pulls them up. He fastens the waistband. And zips up the fly. He slips a belt through the belt loops, and buckles it. Putting on a shirt. Tom slips an arm into each sleeve. He buttons the shirt, and the cuffs. He straightens his collar. He tucks his shirt into his pants. Getting dressed, a woman. Pam puts on some panties, a bra, a dress, or a blouse, or a shirt, and a skirt, or some pants, and some socks, or some nylons, or some pantyhose. Dressing for hot weather. If it's hot. Pam wears light clothes, a short-sleeved cotton shirt, and a pair of cotton shorts. She goes barefoot indoors, and wears sandals outdoors. Dressing this way keeps her cool. Dressing for cold weather. If it's cold, Pam wears heavy clothes, a long-sleeved shirt. A wool sweater, long pants, and thick wool socks. Before going outdoors, she puts on a heavy coat, and some gloves or mittens. She wraps a scarf around her neck, and puts on a hat, and some boots. Dressing this way keeps her warm. Making a bed. I put a bottom sheet on the mattress. If I have a fitted sheet, I slip it over the mattress. 
If I have a flat sheet, I tuck it under the mattress. Then I tuck the top sheet under the mattress at the foot of the bed. I pull the top sheet tight and spread a blanket over the bed and smooth it out. I spread a bedspread over the bed. I fluff up the pillows and lay them at the head of the bed. I pull the bedspread over the pillows and smooth it out. Making coffee, making tea. Making coffee with an electric coffee maker. Pam scoops some ground coffee into the filter. Then she pours some water into the coffee maker. She turns the coffee maker on by pressing the switch. The water heats up and drips through the ground coffee and into the coffee pot. Making tea. Dan boils water in a tea kettle. He pours the hot water into a teapot, and adds some tea leaves. As the tea leaves soak in the water, the water becomes tea. Dan strains the tea. Then he adds sugar and milk, and stirs his tea. Preparing cold cereal, making toast. Preparing cold cereal. Pam pours some cereal from the box into her bowl. She pours in some milk, and sprinkles some sugar on her cereal. Then she peels a banana, slices it, and puts the slices on her cereal. Making toast. Dan puts two slices of bread into the toaster. By pressing the starter. He lowers the bread into the toaster. Hot wires inside the toaster toast the bread. The toast pops up when it's done. Dan spreads some butter and jam on his toast. Frying an egg. There are four burners on Dan's stove. He turns on the gas, and one of the burners lights. He puts a frying pan on the burner, and melts some butter in the pan. He cracks an egg into the pan, and throws the shell into the garbage. The egg fries. Dan flips it over once with a spatula, and then takes it out of the pan. He puts the egg on a plate. Eating breakfast. Pam and Dan sit down at the table. Pam drinks some coffee from her mug, and eats some cereal. Dan drinks some tea, and has an egg with bacon and toast. Sometimes he dips his toast into the yolk of his egg. As they eat, they read the paper, and talk a little bit. After eating. They wipe their lips with their napkins, and leave the table. Leaving the house, Tom puts on a jacket, and zips it up. He puts on his shoes and ties them. He picks up his keys and wallet, and puts them in his pockets. He picks up his backpack. Then he says goodbye to Jenny. He opens the door, steps outside, and shuts the door. Taking a bus. Jenny checked her bus schedule. Her bus, a number seventy-seven, was due at eight twenty. She walked to the bus stop, and sat on a bench to wait for the bus. The bus arrived on time at eight twenty. The driver opened the door, and Jenny got on the bus. She showed the driver her bus pass. Other passengers paid their fare. All the seats were full, so Jenny stood in the aisle. 
she held onto a strap on the overhead bars. Soon, someone got off the bus, so a seat was empty. Jenny sat down and read a book while she rode the bus. Near her stop, she pressed a button to ring the stop signal. She walked to the exit and got off at her stop. Driving a car one. Starting out. Kate sat in the driver's seat, and her friends sat in the passenger seats. Kate adjusted her seat and the rearview mirror. She buckled her seatbelt. She put the key into the ignition, turned the key, and started the car. She looked over her shoulder, and backed out of the driveway. Driving a car too. Operating a car. Shifting gears. Kate stepped on the clutch pedal, shifted into gear, and took her foot off the clutch. Speeding up, slowing down. To go faster, Kate pressed the accelerator. As the car speeded up, she shifted into a higher gear. To slow down, Kate let up on the accelerator, and shifted into a lower gear. The car slowed down. Stopping. Kate stepped on the brake. Turning. Kate put her turn signal on, and turned the steering wheel. When it got dark, she turned on the lights. When it rained. She turned on the windshield wipers. Driving a car three. Driving along. At an intersection, Kate stopped for a red light. When the light turned green, she went ahead. Once she went over the speed limit. A police officer stopped her, and gave her a ticket. You were speeding, ma'am. Really, officer? Sorry. At the end of her trip, she parked, and turned the car off. Kate and her friends got out of the car, and Kate locked it. Some things drivers do: changing lanes, turning left, turning right, going straight. Getting on, entering a freeway, getting off, exiting a freeway, yielding right of way, passing someone, pulling over to the side of the road, stopping for gas. Kate pulled into a gas station, and pulled up to a pump. She told the attendant what kind of gas she wanted and how much. Yes, ma'am. Unleaded. Fill it up, please. He pumped the gas for her, and checked the oil. Oil's okay, ma'am. Then she paid him. That'll be fifteen dollars. Here you go. Taking a train. Tom bought a ticket from the ticket machine. Other passengers bought tickets at the ticket window. Tom inserted his ticket into the slot in the turnstile. The gate opened, and Tom walked through. He followed the signs to his gate. He waited on the platform next to the track. After his train arrived, he got on. The train was crowded, so he had to stand. His station was announced. Newville Station, and he got off the train. Taking a taxi. Pam hailed a taxi. She got into the back seat, and told the driver where she wanted to go. I need to go to Riverside Square. Okay. 
He started the meter. She checked the meter a few times. Hmm, four fifty. That's about right. During the ride, she gave the driver directions. Turn left at the next traffic light. All right. She told him where to stop. Pull over by that red car. Yes, ma'am. She paid the fare and gave him a tip. Here's six twenty plus a little extra for you. Thank you. Walking somewhere. Dan walked on the sidewalk. Sometimes he stepped over dirt or puddles. Once he tripped on a crack in the sidewalk. At a corner, he stopped at the curb and waited for traffic to pass. Then he crossed the street by walking in the crosswalk. Once he took a shortcut across a parking lot. When he could, he ran because he was late. He crossed a busy street by using a pedestrian overpass. Riding a bicycle. I put on my helmet. I held the handlebars, and swung my leg over the bike. I started pedaling, and the bike moved. To go uphill, I shifted into a lower gear. To slow down, I squeezed the brakes. Finally, I got off my bike, and locked it up in a bike rack. Returning home. To an apartment. Dan got back to his building. He checked his mailbox and took out his mail. Then he took an elevator up to his floor. He walked down the hall to his apartment. He opened his door and went inside. Hi, Pam. I'm back. Hi, Dan. Taking an elevator. Pressing the up button. Waiting for the elevator. Getting on the elevator. Choosing a floor. Getting off the elevator. To a house. I got back to my house. I walked up the steps to my front door. I unlocked it with my house key, and then opened the door by turning the doorknob. I set my bag down. I hung my coat up in the front closet, and took off my shoes. I picked up my mail. Then I went into the living room, and checked for messages on the answering machine. You have three messages. Then I changed clothes. I took off my work clothes, and changed into some casual clothes. Making a salad. Paul rinsed some lettuce by running water over it, and drained it in a colander. He also rinsed some tomatoes and cucumbers, and sliced them with a knife on a cutting board. He mixed the lettuce and the cucumber in a salad bowl, and laid the tomato slices on top. Then he sprinkled some grated cheese on the salad. He poured some dressing on his salad. Preparing vegetables. Kate peeled some carrots and sliced them. She also chopped up some broccoli. She threw the stalk away, and rinsed the broccoli. She put some water in a saucepan, and put a steamer basket inside. Then she put the vegetables in the basket. She put a lid on the saucepan, and lit the burner under it. The water boiled and steamed the vegetables. Making spaghetti. Kate diced an onion, and fried it with some ground beef in a frying pan. As the beef and onion mixture fried, she stirred it. When the meat was brown, she turned off the burner. She poured the fat off into a can. 
She heated two cans of tomato sauce in a saucepan. She added the mixture of beef and onions, and stirred it into the sauce with some spices. When it started to boil, she turned down the heat and let the sauce simmer. In another pan, she boiled some water. She put some spaghetti into the boiling water, and boiled it until it was tender. In a colander, she drained the spaghetti. After putting the spaghetti on a plate, she ladled some sauce over it. Cooking rice. Paul measured out one cup of rice, and poured it into a pot. To rinse the rice, he put some water in the pot. He poured off the water to get rid of the dirt and husks. Then he measured out two cups of clean water and poured it into the pot. He put a lid on the pot and heated the water. When it started boiling, he turned down the flame. After about fifteen minutes, he checked the rice. Let's see if this is ready. He decided it was ready to eat. Yep, done. Eating dinner. Paul and Kate set the table. Everyone sat down at the table. They put their napkins on their laps. Paul helped himself to some salad, and passed the serving dish to Kate. Then they helped themselves to the food. As they ate, they talked. So, where did you go today? Nowhere special. Paul had a second helping of spaghetti. I'll have a bit more of this. After the main course, they had some dessert. Mmm, ice cream, looks good. Clearing the table. After everyone was done, Paul and Kate offered to clear the table. Paul and I will clear up. Yeah, the rest of you just sit and relax. They stacked up the dirty dishes, and carried them to the kitchen. They took the serving dishes off the table, and put the leftovers into containers. Which they put into the refrigerator. They scraped the scraps from the plates into the garbage. Then they wiped the table off, and threw the scraps and crumbs from the table into the garbage. Doing dishes. Paul put the plug into the drain in the sink. Then he filled the sink with water. He put some dish soap. Into the water, he washed the dirty dishes. He scrubbed some very dirty dishes. Then he rinsed the dishes. He put the wet dishes in the dish rack, where the water dripped off them. Then he pulled the plug from the sink, and the dirty water went down the drain. He dried the dishes with a towel. And then put the dishes away. Playing a CD. I chose a CD from the shelf. Holding the disc at the edge, I took it out of the case. Then I loaded the disc into the tray. I picked up the remote, and punched in the number of the track I wanted to listen to. I listened to the music. Finally, I ejected the CD. Using a personal cassette player, I put a cassette into the player. I plugged the earphones into the jack, and put them on. Then I started the tape. I adjusted the volume, turned it up to make the music louder. And turned it down to make the music softer. 
When I was done listening, I took the tape out and put it back in the case. Reading. Reading a book. Pam opened the book to her bookmark. She turned the pages as she read. When she saw a word she didn't know, Bogus? What does that mean? She looked it up in a dictionary. When she finished reading, she closed the book. Reading a magazine. Pam picked up the latest issue of Everyone magazine. She looked at some of the ads. Then she flipped through the magazine until she found an interesting article. She read the article and looked at the pictures. Watching television. Tom picked up the remote for the TV and turned the TV on. A game show was on. Tom didn't want to watch it. That's boring. So he used the remote to change channels. He turned up the volume so he could hear better. During a commercial, he went to the kitchen for a snack. He watched the news, and when it ended, that's the end of the news. Watching a video. Jenny rented a video from a video store. There you are, ma'am. At home, she took the tape out of the case. With the remote, she switched to the video setting, and turned the VCR on. She loaded the video into it, and started the tape. She and Tom watched the video. To see something again, they rewound the tape. I'd like to see that again. Jenny paused it when Tom left for a minute. At the end of the video, she stopped the tape, rewound, and ejected it. Later, she returned it to the store. Babysitting. Tom babysat his cousins, took care of them while their parents were gone. Tom's aunt and uncle dropped the children off at Tom's house. Bye, kids. Be good. They'll be fine, Aunt Rita. Tom took them to a playground. Back at Tom's house. They played with blocks, drew pictures with crayons, and put a puzzle together. Tom changed the baby's diaper, and put him to bed in the crib. The other children took a bath. Tom read them a story, and they watched a cartoon on TV. Later, their parents picked the children up. Going to bed. When it got late, Jenny yawned. She said good night to her parents. Good night, Jen. Good night, Mom, Dad. She went upstairs to her room, and changed into her nightgown. She hung some of her clothes up in the closet, and put her dirty clothes in the laundry basket. She brushed her teeth, washed her face, and used the toilet. After turning on her bedside lamp, she turned off the room light. She pulled back the covers, and got into bed. She set her alarm clock, and put it on her nightstand. She read in bed for a while. Finally, she turned off the lamp, lay down, and fell asleep. Doing laundry. Later today, I'm going to do my laundry. I'll carry the laundry basket to the laundry room. I'll take the laundry out of the basket, and then I'll sort it by separating dark colors from light. 
I'll check the pockets of the pants and shirts, and take out anything I find in them. Then I'll put a load of laundry into the washing machine. I'll adjust the settings on the machine. Then I'll put in some detergent, and turn the machine on. The machine will wash, rinse, and spin the laundry. I'll take the wet clothes out of the machine. I'll hang some of the laundry out to dry. I'll put some other laundry into the dryer. The dryer will dry it by heating and tumbling it. Then I'll take it out of the machine. I'll fold some of the dry laundry, and put it into drawers. I'll iron other things, and hang them up in the closet. Cleaning the house, in the living room. Pam picks up things that are lying around. She dusts the furniture, and the woodwork. Then she vacuums the carpet. In the kitchen, Dan cleans the refrigerator and throws out spoiled food. Yuck! This cucumber is mushy. Pam wipes the countertops and sweeps the floor. In the bathroom, Dan scrubs the toilet with a toilet brush, cleans the sink, and scrubs the bathtub. He washes the mirror on the medicine cabinet. Then he sweeps the floor, and mops it. Taking out the trash. They bundle old newspapers, and put empty bottles, cans, and jars into bags. They set them out for recycling. Then they empty waste baskets, and the kitchen garbage. Into a big garbage bag, and take it out to the garbage can. Taking care of a cat. To feed his cat, Tom opened a can of cat food, and put it in the cat's dish. He put some fresh water in the water dish. He also cleaned the litter box. He petted the cat. Good kitty. And she purred and rubbed against his leg. He played with the cat by moving a piece of string, which the cat pounced on. Taking care of a dog. I called my dog. Here, Blackie, come on, boy. After he came, I petted him. He wagged his tail, and barked. I put some dog food in his dish, and filled his water dish. Later, I clipped a leash to his collar, and took him out for a walk. After his walk, I threw a stick for him, and he fetched it. Taking care of a lawn. Pam filled her lawnmower's gas tank, then started the mower. By pulling the cord, she mowed the lawn by pushing the mower back and forth. Where the mower couldn't reach, she trimmed the grass by hand. She raked up the grass clippings, and put them on a compost pile. She spread some grass seed on bare spots, and then watered the lawn. Gardening. Planting a garden. Tom will turn the soil with a spade. He'll plant some seeds, and cover them with a mound of soil. He'll plant some seedlings, and tie them to small stakes. Then he'll water the garden. Taking care of a garden. Tom will weed the garden. He'll prune extra leaves from some plants. He'll check for harmful insects, and spray insecticide on some plants. He'll put some fertilizer on the soil. 
Finally, he'll pick some flowers for the house. Cleaning a car. Inside. I wash the windows inside, wipe off the dashboard, and vacuum the floor. Outside. I dip a sponge into soapy water and wash the car with it. To rinse the car, I spray it with water. I dry it with some rags. Then I spread some wax on the car. After it has dried, I wipe the wax off and buff the car with a soft cloth. Finally, I wash the windows outside. Taking a car to a garage for repairs. I called for an appointment to get my car fixed. My car is making a strange noise. When can you look at it? I took my car into the garage, and the mechanic diagnosed the problem. Yep, sounds like a valve problem. I asked him for an estimate of the cost. How much will it cost to fix? Probably about two fifty. He worked on the engine. When I came back later to pick up the car, it's ready. Is it ready yet? He gave me the bill for the repair. That'll be two ninety four for parts and labor. Two hundred ninety four dollars. Ouch. Changing a flat tire. My car had a flat tire, so I had to change it. I jacked the car up. I took off the flat tire, and took the spare tire out of the trunk. I put the spare on the wheel, tightened the lug nuts by hand, lowered the car to the ground, and tightened the nuts some more with a lug wrench. Finally, I put the hubcap on the wheel. Dealing with a power failure. During a thunderstorm, our power went out. I turned on a flashlight, and my sister lit some candles. We found the circuit breaker box, and found the breakers that had tripped. We reset the breakers. And the power came back on. Good. It worked. Working with wood. Before you cut a board, you measure it, and mark the places to cut. Then you cut it with a saw. <laughs> to trim a piece of wood, you plane it. To make the edges smooth, you sand them. To join two pieces of wood. You can glue them together, nail them together, or join them with screws. Joining things with bolts, screws. To bolt things together, you put a bolt through some holes, put a washer onto the bolt, and then tighten a nut by hand. Then you hold the nut with a pair of pliers. And tighten the bolt with a wrench. To join things with screws, you drill a hole for the screw. You put a screwdriver into the slot on the head of the screw. You tighten the screw by turning the screwdriver clockwise. To loosen the screw, you turn it counterclockwise. Shopping for groceries. Tom gets a shopping cart. Some people use a basket instead of a cart. He checks his shopping list to see what he should buy. In the fresh produce section, he checks the fruit and vegetables by feeling and smelling them. He puts some fruit in a plastic bag, and weighs the fruit on a scale. Next, he picks up some fresh meat at the meat counter. I'll have four chicken breasts, please. Then, at the deli, 
he gets some cold cuts. Some beef pastrami, please. Six slices. And cheese. And a half pound of cheddar. He goes through the canned goods aisle. He checks the prices on two brands of canned peas, and chooses the cheaper one. As he shops, he looks for specials. He picks up some toilet paper in the household goods section, and gets some milk in the dairy section. He tries a free sample of some pizza. Try some, sir. It's on special. And takes some frozen pizza from the frozen food case. Finally, he goes to the checkout counter. Paying for things. The cashier rings up Tom's purchases by scanning barcodes and pressing keys on the cash register. She tells him the total to pay. That'll be twenty-three dollars and fifty cents. Paying with cash. He takes some money out of his wallet, and gives it to her. Here's thirty dollars. She puts it into the register, and takes out his change. She counts it out to him. Twenty-three dollars and fifty cents. Twenty-four, twenty-five, and five makes thirty. And gives it to him with his receipt. Paying by check. He writes out a check. After he signs the check, the cashier checks his driver's license as identification. Can I see some ID, please? Sure. Here's my driver's license. He records the check in his checkbook. She returns his license and gives him a receipt. Paying by credit. He gives his card to the cashier. She swipes the card through the reader. When the approval code comes, the payment slip is printed. He signs the payment slip. Then she gives him a copy of the slip. The receipt and his card back. Going to a bank. Paul went to the bank. At a counter, he filled out a deposit slip. He filled it out by writing his account number, the amounts of his cash and checks, and a total. At the teller window, he endorsed the checks by signing them on the back. Then he gave the teller his deposit. She checked the amounts on the slip, and printed the amount of deposit in his passbook, and gave him back his passbook. Thanks. Have a nice day. Using an ATM. Kate needed money. Whoops! I'd better find a cash machine. So she went to an ATM in the store. She took her cash card out of her purse. She lined up the magnetic strip properly, and inserted the card into the slot on the ATM. A message on the screen asked for her PIN, so she entered her PIN by pressing keys on the keypad. Then she entered the amount of money she needed. The machine returned her card and gave her her money. Making a phone call. Jenny looked up Kate's phone number in the phone book. She picked up the receiver, and heard a dial tone. Then she dialed the number. She heard Kate's phone ringing. When Kate answered, "Hello," Jenny said hello and identified herself. "Hi, Kate. This is Jenny." Then she said why she called. "I'm calling to see whether you'd like to go swimming." Answering a telephone, Kate heard the phone ringing, and picked up the receiver. She answered the phone by saying hello. 
Hello? And then let the caller speak. Hi, Kate. This is Jenny. They talked for a while. Whether you'd like to go swimming? I'd love to, Jenny. When? And then she hung up. If it's a wrong number. Kate didn't know the person the caller asked for. Could I speak with Mike? She told him that he had a wrong number. I'm sorry. There's no one here by that name. You have the wrong number. He apologized and hung up. Oops, sorry. Leaving a message. I asked to speak to Dan. Can I speak to Dan, please? But he wasn't available. I'm sorry, but he's not here right now. I identified myself and asked her to take a message. This is Alex. I work with Dan. Could you please take a message for him? She agreed and asked me to repeat my name. Sure. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. I repeated it. It's Alex. Alex Rivera. And spelled my last name. Could you spell that out, please? Sure. That's R I V E R A. I also left my number. And my number is 555 5959. Five 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 nine five nine, and asked that he call me back. Could you ask him to give me a call, please? Thanks. Taking a message. Pam answered the phone. Hello. And the caller asked for Dan. Is a Dan there, please? She said he wasn't available and offered to take a message. Sorry, he can't come to the phone right now. Can I take a message? The caller left a message for Dan. Yes, please tell him that Lester called. Pam wrote the message on some notepaper and put it next to the phone. Later, Dan got the message and returned Lester's call. Hi, Lester. This is Dan. You called? Using an answering machine. Tom recorded an outgoing message on his machine. We can't come to the phone right now. After the beep, please leave a message. When Jenny called, she heard the message. We can't come to the phone right now. And left her own message for him. Tom, this is Jenny. Please call me back at the office before six o'clock. When Tom got home, he saw a light showing that he had a message. He pressed the button to play the message. As he listened to it, Tom, this is Jenny. Please call me back at the office. He took some notes. Then he erased the message. Don't need that anymore. Writing a personal letter. I took out some paper to write to my friend. I wrote the date. And a greeting at the top. I apologized for not writing sooner, and I wrote about what I'd been doing. As I wrote, I reread her last letter to me. I answered questions she had asked, and I asked her about herself. Then I wrote a closing, and signed the letter. Mailing a letter. I enclose some pictures. I hope she likes the pictures. I fold up my letter, and put it in the envelope with the pictures. I write my friend's address in the middle of the envelope, and my return address at the upper left. I seal the envelope. I don't know how much postage I need, so I take the letter to the post office. I stand in line. When it's my turn, I go to the window. 
I ask the clerk how much postage I need. How much do I need on this? He asks me how I want the letter to go. Regular mail or express? Regular. And weighs the letter. I buy enough stamps for the postage. A dollar twenty. Okay. I lick the stamps and stick them on the envelope. I put the letter in the mailbox. Going to a birthday party. Before the party, I wrap a present for my friend, and sign a card for him. At the party, I give him the present and the card. Here you go, Leo. Happy birthday! Thanks, Alex. Come on in. Someone lights the candles on the birthday cake. We all sing Happy Birthday. Happy birthday, dear Leo. And Leo blows out the candles. He opens his birthday presents. Hey, I've been wanting this CD. Thanks. And then everyone eats cake and ice cream. Going to a dinner party. Dan, the host, greets Tom and Jenny, the guests, at the door. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Hi, Tom. Jenny, glad you could come. They give him a bottle of wine they brought. Thanks, Jenny, but you didn't have to bring anything. Inside, they say hello to some people they know. Leo, Kate, good to see you. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jenny. Dan introduces them to some people. Tom, Jenny, I'd like you to meet Sharon Melton and her husband John. They shake hands. Glad to meet you, John. Same here, Tom. And make some small talk. Sure was a hot one today. Yeah. They have their dinner. At the end of the evening, the guests say good night. And thank Dan. Thanks, Dan. Great party. Glad you could come. Drive safely. Going to a movie. We found out where and when the movie was showing. We bought tickets at the box office. Two, please, for Skull Night. Fourteen dollars, please. And some popcorn at the snack counter. Two large popcorns, please. Okay. The ticket taker tore our tickets and gave us back the stubs. We went to our seats. We watched previews of coming attractions. Then we saw the main feature. At the end, we watched the credits. Eating at a fast food restaurant. Jenny stood in line. And read the menu. At the counter, she ordered her food and a drink. I'd like one big burger, a small order of fries, and a medium cola, please. For here or to go? For here, please. The clerk put the food on Jenny's tray, and Jenny paid her. That'll be five twenty. Right. Jenny took some paper napkins and a straw from the dispensers. She ate her lunch at her table. Other people got their food to go. When she finished eating, she threw the empty wrappers in the trash.